Hey, DVR Tech here to talk about the GE Opal 2 Nugget Ice Maker that I purchased recently with the side tank. So if you live in Texas like I do, ice is kind of a thing of life. Um, you want it constantly because it's constantly hot. You want it to cool drinks. You, sometimes my kids just eat the ice on its own. And so we go through a lot of ice. And you would think the side tank would be enough to really keep this thing going without a whole lot of interaction. But what I found is we were refilling this thing a couple of times a day. And that was starting to get a little annoying because the kids never fill it and there was never ice when I got to the machine. So you might take a look at the back of this and the way that the side tank hooks up and think I'll just plug in a water line. Uh, the connection size is about the same. And so you could, in theory, plug in the water line straight to the unit. So if you connect the side tank hose directly to a water line, what you're going to find is that it plugs straight into the reservoir inside the ice maker. And the water pressure will just fill past the water line and start overflowing out onto the counter and possibly destroy the unit. Let's take a look at how this actually works. So on the left, you'll see an example of the side tank and a picture of the ice maker and how it's laid out you'll notice there's a fill line. We never want to exceed that fill line. So if we connect a hose between the main tank that's in the ice maker and the side tank, what's going to happen is the water pressure is going to try to equalize the volume between both tanks. So they will equal out and end up under the fill line. Now you may be thinking, when I fill up the tank, there's a lot more water in there than what is in the ice maker tank itself. And that's because there is a valve at the bottom of the clear tank that ensures the water never exceeds the fill line inside of the lower part of the side tank itself. So I started engineering a solution to this so I didn't have to keep filling the side tank up. And I started thinking of a float valve. A float valve opens up when the water level gets low and as the water level rises, it closes off the water from filling the tank to, to not exceed where we want it to be. It's the same principle that's used in a toilet. So if you've ever taken the, the back of a toilet off and have seen how the water goes up and down, uh, that same principle applies here. As it reaches the top, the float closes off the water flow into the tank. So I started out by prototyping this just by cutting out a piece of plastic, putting the float valve through it, and kind of mocking up what I wanted to do. Once I confirmed this worked, I went ahead and I started designing the part in uh, Tinkercad, and then transferred that to my 3D printer, prototyped it in PLA, made some adjustments to the fit and to the location of the float valve so that it lined up where I needed it to. And finally, I printed it out in PETG. And so here you can see the final result with a quarter inch water line connected to it. You can see the shutoff valve just behind that in case this ever went wrong. One thing I will note is you want to tape down this unit. So I just use some clear tape and just put it on both sides to make sure it, it's solid. I printed in 100% infill PETG and it is very, very light. Uh, light enough that the hose itself could pull it off the top. So that tape is a little important, but you'll see there's zero modification to the side tank itself. We just take off the clear tank and replace it with our auto filling cover. So head on over to Thingiverse, grab the part. I put the float valve link below. And of course, if you like this, like and subscribe below. Thanks.